Yo, what up? My name is Don, and today I was going to do a music reaction, but instead I'm going to talk about a situation that happened to me earlier today when I tried to buy a guitar off Facebook Marketplace. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Okay, so as some of you may know, I am a guitar player, and earlier today I had come across a listing on my local Facebook Marketplace for a uh, Jackson 7-string guitar. I'd been looking for a 7-string guitar for quite a while now, it's been on my throne list uh, ever since I made my throne list, which a, um, one of my viewers in my stream actually kind of uh, implored me to do. Um, but I've wanted a Jackson, uh, sorry, I wanted a seven string for a while, not specifically Jackson, but Jackson does happen to make a seven string where the cost is relatively low. And so it's a good starter guitar. It's kind of a good platform for a lot of guitarists to get into having a seven string and then they can upgrade the hardware from there. They can upgrade the pickups from there. They can upgrade, you know, whatever other pieces of the guitar they want and really just kind of really uh, make the guitar their own. So I had the opportunity to pick up, like I was saying, a Jackson JS22 uh, DKA uh, seven string. This is the guitar that came out a couple years ago. Um, it is a black satin guitar. I can actually have it up on screen here for just a moment. Uh, here it is, so you can kind of get a glimpse of it. I wonder if we just click it here. You can get a look at it there. It's simple guitar, nothing too fancy to it. It's satin. It's not even gloss. Um, so some, some, one of the things you'll see with uh, used uh, Jacksons of this specific model <clears throat> is that there will be um, a little kind of shiny part here. Not because it's gloss, but that's because, you know, a guitarist's hand is always resting just about in this area and always sweating in that area. So unless you really keep it clean, um, you know, most of the guitars that are used end up having that spot there. Now, anyways, the thing I wanted to highlight is that this guitar still sells for $279 Canadian brand new from our nationwide uh, distributor here, from our nationwide store, Long & McQuaid. And, you know, the opportunity I had today was to buy the guitar for $100. In the pictures, it looked uh, undamaged. Um, I tech my own guitars. This just means I work on my own guitars. I've been doing it for over five years. Now I'm very comfortable with uh, teching my own guitars and taking care of them um, and you know, um, providing maintenance to them throughout the years. Um, I have two guitars right now. Um, if you've watched my music reactions, you can see them over here. I have my camo one that's been with me for over 15 years now. I, I believe 16 years on going to 17. And I have uh, this one here. Uh, this um, uh, V-shaped guitar, you might be able to see the fins just at the bottom right there. Um, but that is a uh, ESP LTD Aero 1000 and my ESP Eclipse 256. Uh, those are my pride and joy. Um, unfortunately, I don't like any of the seven-string models that uh, ESP really makes. So I've been looking at other companies. And uh, like I was saying, the opportunity I had today was to pick one of these up for $100. So now I'm going to get into the messages and the experience and the whole point of this video, which is why are some sellers so bad on Facebook Marketplace? Why is the experience so bad on Facebook Marketplace? And <clears throat> unfortunately, today I had one of those experiences, which I thought was going to be an absolute steal. I thought that I really lucked out here. So I messaged him after consulting on my stream. I asked my my viewers, you know, hey, should I get this? You know, it's a hundred dollars. It's Again, like there are a couple hundred dollars new, 279 specifically, and uh, it just got listed this morning. You know, it looks dusty but undamaged. Like I'm, I'm kind of, you know, between, you know, money's not, money's a little tight, so I'm, I'm wondering if I should do it. They said go for it. I was like, ah, okay. So um, I messaged uh, the dude, and I will put. I'm reading this off my phone, but I will put the messages, uh, the message chain on screen. Uh, without any locations or names or anything like that. <clears throat> but I said, hey, brother, I'll grab this off you for 100 That's the price he listed it. I didn't negotiate. I straight up said, like, no haggling. It's listed for 100 Hey, brother, I'll grab this off you for 100 All I asked was, anything wrong with it electronically? And I added, if not, I can come with the money today. And I put little horn sign. Now, the reason why I'm so forthcoming, I'm always this way when it comes to selling or sorry, buying things online. Um, I don't want the seller to have any part of a frustrating experience or what I would consider a frustrating experience. So I don't haggle generally. I only approach somebody if I'm if I've already confirmed that I'm comfortable with the price. Um, 
And the only reason why I would maybe approach somebody on a lower price is if I see something up for, you know, weeks, months at a time, you know, you know, three to four weeks, a couple months, and it's still there, maybe I'll approach them about a bit of a price drop. Other than that, I'm very straightforward. I got the money in hand. I will show up. There you go. Count it right in front of me. I won't touch anything. And as soon as you're good and good to go, you know, I pick up the item and good to go. I'm a very easy uh, buyer to deal with. Likewise, I'm a very easy seller to deal with. Anyways, today I was the buyer. So he responded practically right away. And he goes, hi, brother. Are you available around seven? Now, this uh, was around 2.20. But we were messaging each other. So say between 2 and, and 2.30 earlier today. He goes, I'll be back around then. I assume he's at work. Cool, cool. He goes, nothing wrong with it electronically. I sent it to a tech just to make sure the jack doesn't get loose anymore. If you don't play uh, guitar, uh, a loose input jack can be a absolute headache of a thing to take care of or a thing to maintenance. You know, you have no idea what happens. It's really just as simple as like a loose uh, lock washer. Um, or something in you know inside, um, you know whatever type of lock washer and and uh, nut um, uh, combination that the manufacturer uses to make sure that the um, the input jack doesn't move. Well, it's just gotten loose, so it's not a big fix. But for people who don't know, it can just seem like a nightmare. So, you know, I'm not going to lead on with what I know or don't know. I just responded, "Yep." Just hit me with the address later on. I can check in a bit beforehand as well, and I'll pop over. I'm coming from right where I'm coming from. He said, okay, perfect, thanks. Awesome, right? Now, he's given me a time at this point, and I told him, right, I can check in a bit beforehand as well, and I'll pop over coming from so-and-so. Perfect. Now, um... The fact that he's given me a time and said, I'll be back around then, I decided to be a preemptively, in my opinion, uh, good buyer. But you could see this from the other perspective. And I understand that already, but I'm going to go ahead and read it just as it is. He said, okay, perfect, thanks. So in my head, I'm thinking because of the two cities' locations where we are and because of how traffic normally hits, don't want to get stuck in like two hour plus traffic. It's totally suck, right? So I decide to leave at a time that almost guarantees I'm there at 7. I arrive at about 7, 10-ish to uh, the city that I have to be in, which is about 40, it says 40 minutes, right? But today, uh, at the time I left, it was about 35-ish minutes, maybe 38-ish minutes, whatever. Um, I said much appreciated about him take, you know, checking uh, with the tech or whatever. And then uh, at 5.48, you know, I messaged him, hey, brother, just checking in for that address. We'll hit the bank once I'm in the city. And, you know, again, I'm just thinking be a preemptive buyer. I'm really stoked to get this guitar, I, you know, maybe a little overexcited. It's not too far away, but I don't see a reason why anything would go awry to what was originally discussed, which is that, you know, he'll be around around seven. Am I available around seven? And it's not just that I'll be available because if I had left at seven, I wouldn't get back until sometime after nine, which ended up happening tonight anyways. But I wanted to have more time to prepare for tonight's YouTube episodes, which I generally start before nine. So I'm trying to do things preemptively and basically plan ahead, right? It ended up being a situation where I, you know, I guess you could say I shot myself in the foot. But anyways, continuing on, um, 7.17, I sent a message, yo, yo, just got into city um, and just chilling now till pickup, right? I have no problem with waiting at this point. Now, I guess here's where a bit of my irritation comes in from the next from from this point forward. At 7:54, I sent a message that is over a half hour later. You know, I, again, we're approaching eight. He said to be available around seven. Uh, hey, dude, it's almost eight now. Uh, we'll wait a bit longer. Just wondering what happened. Now, it's not that he's contacted me back and just been like, "Oh, got busy. Um, can we meet another day?" Uh, you know, oh, uh, emergency happened, this, 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 just anything, right? Anything. I'm a really big, uh, I'm just really big on communication, no matter what the situation is. Uh, I think that just the ability to just be clear, be direct and keep it simple. Like, like I'm a big fan of the kiss rule. Keep it simple, stupid. If you've never heard that saying, well, you know, employ it in your life, right? I feel like 
it's weird when I give people advice being 36 years old because, you know, full grown adult or whatever, but I still feel just like a 20 year old. I still feel like a kid. So when I, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just weird for me to think there's people that may have never heard this before that I may be speaking to because there's a whole, you know, whack of people younger than me in their, in their twenties who are young adults. And I'm just, I never, I never like think about that age group for some reason, because I feel like I'm a part of it. Um, anyways, um, at 7:54, I did send that, uh, you know, message that, Hey dude, it's almost eight now. We'll wait out a bit longer. Just wondering what happened at 8:33, right? An hour and a half out. I said, all right, dude, I'm out. It wasn't meant to sound snarky. That's just kind of the way I talk. All right, dude, I'm out. Um, unless an emergency happened, here's why I just added some, you know, like what, like, huh? Like, uh, I guess you could say added some attitude. I made it a little spicy here. Unless an emergency happened, it's insanely rude to leave someone hanging like that. I said, I waited one hour, 30 minutes with money in hand. He goes, uh, I didn't confirm. I apologize. Okay. Now. I guess you could construe. I, I I don't know which way you might want to see this from. He gave me a time to be available, and at that price point for the guitar, I'm thinking that the person is pretty adamant that they want to sell. In my opinion, in my defense, I guess I don't see any situation that um, prevented communication, which is all I'm asking for. I'm 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 not mad about driving there and driving back. Really, I actually quite love driving my car. I drive a, a manual Golf GTI Mark 7 uh, black. Um, I just paid it off so I can finally start modding it. I, I, you know, eventually get some coilovers for it and, and lower it. It's finally mine, mine. Um, so I, I love driving my car. It's uh, like I said, manual and I'm just a big, you know, I love, I love driving manual cars. It's, it's really a joy to me to drive and not a chore. Um, and the traffic was not bad today. So, you know, and my girlfriend came along with me. So it was, it was a blast. Like I had fun. Um, all I'm really miffed about. And my whole point of this video is I'm mad about communication, the communication of some sellers. And I'm sure that some of you people that may watch this have gone through that too. When you are being a, um, a forthcoming buyer or a forthcoming seller where somebody asks you, is this available? And you're like, yes. And they're like, and you're like, question mark. And they're like, I'm talking in the messages, right? They're like, and you're like, did you still want it? And they're like, like what? Like, I don't understand. You're right. Like people are so, so, so weird, so weird. So I've never really had a situation where I've, I've told the person, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. Like, like I, I got the money in hand. Like I'm a forthcoming buyer. Like, you know, everything's good for me. Like I'm there where you, when you want me to be there. And at the time you want me to be there, like, all you got to do is be there <laughs> and, uh, you know, so anyways, he said, I didn't confirm. I apologize. I said, wow, dude. Right. Cause I had a ready. What's wild to me is that in the span of like an hour and a half worth of messages, which I sent like, I don't know, a message every like maybe like 25 ish minutes or something like that. Um, it's wild that he only sends a message to me after the one of the last messages where I said I'm out. It's wild to me that you're gonna get four or five notifications of messages, and the only thing you're gonna say to me is I I I didn't confirm. I apologize. Oh boy. Huh? <laughs> so I said I just said wow, dude. I said okay. Wondering why you would give me a time then. You know, are you still wanting to sell it? Right. He goes, yes, I'm on my way back. Yes, I'm on my way back. Bro, at this point, the time, uh, the time at that message is 847, so almost 9 o'clock, right? Yes, I'm on my way back. Uh, where are you around? I was already driving home on the highway. Um, all right, I can drop it to you as an apology for all that, right? I'm on the highway, yeah. And... You know, by the time we pull into a plaza and I check my phone again, uh, it says attachment unavailable. I don't know what was there, a picture or something. I have no idea. But it says a contact left the group. And the only thing I can do is block him back. So it's really weird to me, right, that he would only message me back after this whole 
weird ignoring me over an hour and a half of being in the city ready to just give you money and then say that he's on his way back at almost a two-hour mark where am i as if i'm still waiting around and then that he can drop it to me as an apology and then block me bro some people so i have no idea you know some some people's children are absolutely insane um i can't explain that one i really can't explain that one uh somehow you know i feel like i feel like now i got to check you know if the listing is still available on you know from someone else's facebook account just to see if like i can't see it it, it kind of miffs me that i missed out on an opportunity to own a jackson 7 string for 100 dollars that you know basically just looked unplayed unused um because in my opinion someone's terrible communication where you know i'm i'm just i i i, just, I don't know how that happened i just don't know how that happened um that's my experience tonight so i didn't really get home in time to plan for a music reaction um there's a lot of people who recently if anybody uh is watching me from that crowd the crowd it, that uh, comes from the massive amount of subscribers that I got from the um, Eminem song that Easy Mill was on, uh, Head Honcho. Um, but, you know, I kind of want to go through all the comments a little bit more and figure out which song I want to start that whole thing with. So, uh, not too sure. If you guys didn't know that I'm a guitar player, definitely hit the stream, which I'll put the links in the descriptions below. Come by uh you can you know request songs and jam and stuff like that but uh this is more about just about a crappy facebook marketplace experience i had where you know such a good deal just kind of slipped out of my hands uh if anybody wants to buy it and mail it to me <laughs> you know what i'm saying but uh i guess i'm still after all that after all that you know uh what else happened tonight uh got got screwed out of the guitar um some old dude uh yelled at me on the road um <laughs> some oldie yelled at me on the road i think for going 10 over in my own lane when he was going slow in the left lane blocking traffic from passing him this was like there are oh, so many other things went wrong but this was like the highlight of my night when i was almost home so he wasn't that old was like 50s i'm 36 whatever maybe 50s but he is slow in the left lane blocking traffic and so he like doesn't merge into my lane. He like crosses like an X like aggressively into my lane and then slows right down and yells out his window slow lane while I'm going 10 over in my own lane, which is not illegal by any means. There's no problem with that. And there's nobody in front of me or behind me or anything like that. Right. He's just an idiot who decided to, for some reason, aggressively cross into my lane at the last second. Like, I don't know. People are wild tonight. Tonight was not a good, or today was not, a, 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 it didn't end up being a good day. Well, it started out to be a good day. But uh, that is my story. That is my Facebook marketplace nightmare story for today. Maybe I can come across some other good deals. Um, if you are a guitar player, uh, even if not, let me know about your nightmare stories where somebody has approached you and ghosted you, or uh, you've been, you know, somebody's wanted to buy something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody wanted to buy something from you and ghosted you, or you wanted to buy something from somebody and they've ghosted you for some reason, which is the more weird one, I would say, right? They want to get rid of something. They want money. You have money. You want to give them money. And then they're just nowhere to be found. That is weird. So, so, uh, anyways, it, I, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like my brain is like flabbergasted after that. I can't even talk. Let me know your comments your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, uh, if you want more content like this, if you want more real life stories uh, and situations like that, uh, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.